ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम we are discussing uh, the problem of symmetry of normal modes of vibration right and we have said that for water it is rather simple to figure out what the normal modes look like right and when we close the discussion the previous day we had said that it is not going to be so simple if you think of a molecule with one more atom okay say bf3 or carbonate ion it is like water with one more atom added to it right this is what it is this part looks like water you have added one more atom you are told me that we are going to have six normal modes of course and i am showing you the uh, pictures of those normal modes these are the normal modes of vibration for a d3h molecule with four atoms like bf3 or carbonate now if you look at these you could have perhaps guessed this one the symmetric stretch okay and this one what kind of motion is this this plus and minus means plus means coming to coming towards you minus means going away from you so this is called doming motion dome you know a dome you see on top of a uh, uh, mosque or a gurudwara or some churches you have domes right gumbaj gumbuj right that's a dome so here it's a planar trigonal planar structure if the bonds come towards you of course to keep the center of gravity in place the center the central atom has to go away from you behind the plane of the projection that is called doming motion right a planar structure becomes a dome that is called doming so this doming motion also perhaps you can kind of guess this is like a symmetric uh, this is like a bending motion you can perhaps guess but you don't know by how much this will go up i cannot guess this one definitely not this one and if i can guess this one i don't know the difference between this and this okay so it is not simple you cannot figure out but of course since i have drawn those arrows there must be some way of knowing what the normal modes look like for even these molecules okay so there's something called wilson's fg matrix by which you can actually figure out the frequencies and amplitudes of all these normal modes of vibration okay amplitudes mean amplitudes of uh, each individual internal motion so the point is it is impossible to do it by intuition right so what we'll do here i, I told you what we'll not do i should also tell you what we'll do we'll try to use symmetry to figure out as much as we can of this problem what we should will be able to do is will be able to tell how many normal modes of which symmetry are present when i say which symmetry i mean which irreducible representation okay you see we'll be able to do that and we'll also be able to tell which of these are ir active which of these are raman active and while doing that we'll arrive at something called mutual exclusion principle for uh, centrosymmetric molecules and the way we do it is this is our recipe we go back to basics what was uh, the basic how did we get this number 3n minus 6 we said that of these n atoms each is associated with three coordinates x y or z right so we work with these 3n cartesian coordinates x y z attached to each atom then what we'll do is we'll figure out the symmetries of these ensemble of 3n cartesian coordinates from there we'll eliminate the uh, three translational and three rotational coordinates and then we'll not really do transformation to symmetric coordinates but to some extent we'll be able to tell what is the contribution of which internal motion to each of these normal modes okay part of it might sound like greek and latin or hebrew at this moment but let us uh, be brave and take the first step things will become clearer as we go so this is my molecule okay bf3 or carbonate we'll just write 1 2 3 4 
as the identifiers for atoms. What is the first step? I must oh uh, by the way uh, this discussion is uh, there in many books. I am following Cotton's book but more or less identical discussion is there definitely in Graybeel's book and I think even Macquarie and Simon but I am not sure about that ok. But uh, Cotton uh, symmetry in chemistry is fairly commonly available you can follow it. So, this is what it is. So, what will I do to start with? I will assign x, y, z to each of these ok and what we will do is we will follow co Cotton's convention and draw the x, y, z axis like this. Could I have uh, drawn it in some other way? Of course, I could have drawn ok, but I have to start with some convention. This is the convention that we use. So, it is important to understand the directions of x and y and z and this is where yes. So, this is x axis pointing downwards right. How do I define it? If this is the uh, carbon atom, if this is the uh, not carbon atom whatever atom, if this is atom number what was it? 1 right? Yeah, it is written there. If the top atom is atom number 1 then x axis is aligned with the 1 4 bond and of course, the other x axis have to be parallel to it ok. How have I drawn y perpendicular to x axis like this ok. Of course, the other x axis uh, sorry y axis y axis is perpendicular to this x axis the other y axis have to be parallel to that first y. Are we clear about that? This is a central one of course. What about z axis? z axis is pointing towards you this is for 1, this is for 2, this is for 3 ok. It is easier for you to understand if I act the molecule. So, ok. Now, what I will do is I will how many coordinates do I have then? How many atoms? How many coordinates? 12. So, you understand for each of these operations we are going to deal with 12 coordinates. So, we will actually try to work out the transformation matrices. So, those will be 12 by 12 matrices and then we will see what we see. And by the time we are done, we will actually learn a couple of very useful tricks which will help us to reduce the dimensionality. You will see we will not have to deal with 12 by 12 matrices actually. And next day, we will actually learn a uh, very easy uh, mathematical expression which we can use as a black box. But uh, it will not be a black box for us, we will learn how it comes ok. So, to start with what is the what is the symmetry point group? What is the point group of this molecule? D 3 H very good. What are the symmetry operations? First one I can say easily E. E. What about E? E is there. Next C 3. Then 3 C 2's. Where are the C 2's? Along the bonds is not it? This is a C 2. This is a C 2. This is a C 2. Ok. What else? Sigma h. What is sigma h? Molecular plane. Very good. What else? But wait, is there any other axis? You talked about the uh, uh, simple axis of symmetry. Is there any compound axis? S3 is also there, right? C3 is also S3. Ok. Now, what about other any other sigma? this, this, this perpendicular planes ok. I do we have point of inversion? No ok. Let us begin. So, first one what is the first matrix? Matrix for E. E what is E? E means doing nothing or multiplying by 1 right. So, what are what are the coordinates I have? x 1 y 1 z 1, x 2 y 2 z 2, x 3 y 3 z 3, x 4 y 4 z 4 12 coordinates right. So, what is the matrix for E for a 12 dimensional basis? It is a 12 dimensional unit matrix is not it? 1 0 0 0 0 then 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 so on and so forth. So, what is the character? 12. So, if you remember character of the unit matrix is equal to the dimensionality of the basis. This is something we have learnt earlier. What is the next operation? C 3. So, we have to understand what happens to the uh, coordinates when I apply C 3. Let us start with 4, 4 is easiest to understand. This is Z right. What happens to Z 4 when I do C 3? 
it remains z4 simple what about z1 this is z1 so i'll do it like this so i'll turn in that direction okay this is z1 turn by 120 degrees what happens it becomes z3 z2 okay what about z2 turn by 120 degrees it becomes z3 what about z3 turn by 120 degrees it becomes z1 are we clear actually i have shown everything here but z i think you have understood right so i'll write that first z1 dash is z2 z2 dash okay it write itself z3 z3 dash equal to z1 and z4 dash equal to z4 all right so when i use a dash i mean transformed coordinate fine now let's work with x and y okay so let's understand carefully what happens to x and y again x4 y4 are easiest to understand this was the original x4 right i've turned by 120 degrees and i went like this if this is x4 90 degrees and 30 degrees 120 degrees this will be the direction of x4 okay in fact it is perhaps easier to understand if you think in terms of x1 where is x1 this is x1 isn't it right you turn by 120 degrees this is the direction of x1 this is the tip of the arrow are we clear okay uh, z z is okay i hope now we are talking about x so this is the x1 arrow right this is x1 this is the tip of the arrow now what am i doing i'm turning by 120 degrees like this it's almost as if i am turning the hand by using this lever right so now x1 dash will point this way if you understood x1 you will understand everything else okay and all other transformed x coordinates will be parallel okay x4 is also easy to understand this is what it is initially 90 degrees 30 degrees 120 degrees x1 is easy to understand this is x1 dashed okay what about y1 dashed or rather let us finish with the x's what about x2 what was the original direction of x2 like this right where will it go it will be something like this right parallel to this and parallel to this right so i hope you have understood the axis and what about y where was y i will go back once again right what about y this was y right again for y4 this is y4 and we are turning like this 90 degrees 30 degrees well parallel to x is all you need to understand one again is easy to understand this is x1 uh, sorry y1 this is the new position of one so this is the position of y1 dash are we clear so that is something i can show generically like this this we have done already yeah so this is x1 dash this is y1 dash now see what have i done i have rotated by 120 degrees so as usual you have to denote the transformed coordinates x1 dash y1 dash in terms of the original coordinates right but this time the difference from our earlier discussion is that now the original coordinates are not x1 y1 what are the original coordinates x2 and y2 why because atom 1 has now gone to where atom 2 was so x1 and y x1 dashed and y1 dashed have to be written in terms of x1 and y1 are we clear about that so how do you know that so what is asking is why do we need vectors we need vectors because uh, how do i know that i have 3n minus 6 normal modes of vibration there are n atoms so the very basic initial formulation is that each atom is associated with x y z that is three coordinates that gives you a total of three n coordinates then take away six from that you are left with only vibrational coordinates so that is what i am doing so we are working with the three n coordinates for 
right now. We have understood this right that x1 dash y1 dash will now have to be expressed in terms of not x1 and y1 but x2 and y2. Similarly, x2 dash y2 dash will be expressed in terms of x3 and y3. x3 dash y3 dash will be expressed in terms of x1 and y1 and x4 dash y4 dash will be expressed in terms of x4 and y4. Like what we have seen for z, see z1 dash is z2, z2 dash is z3, z3 dash is z1, z4 dash is z4. The positions of the atoms if they change then you have to use the coordinates of the original atom the position of which it now takes upon transformation and that is something that will lead to uh, a very very useful uh, piece of information in say 5 6 minutes from now go ahead okay now the job is just write the expression so what i want to write is x1 dash is equal to something into x2 plus something into y2 y1 dash is equal to something into x2 plus something into y2 okay how do i do that you do that uh, very simply recognize the angles all right so now tell me what will it be x1 dash is equal to what multiplied by x2 what is the x2 coordinate of x1 dash first of all this is plus so it will be minus isn't it this angle is 30 so what will be the x2 coordinate of x1 dash sin 30 or cos 30 sin right and will it be plus or minus minus yeah unit vector along the axis yes we are working with unit vectors along x1 y1 z1 yes when we talk about coordinates of course we have to work with the same length that is why all these arrows are drawn as same length. Huh. So, what will it be minus sin 30 degrees how much is that minus half is that right minus half or minus root 3 by 2 I always get confused between the two minus half sure. So, this yeah, I have given you the other answer also. So, x1 dash turns out to be minus half x2 and what is the uh, y2 coordinate already it is along minus y2 so it will be minus root 3 by 2 y2 simple and it is not very difficult to see that for everything you will get these for x2 what about uh, y1 dash what will y1 dash be y1 dash will be how much multiplied by x2 plus how much multiplied by y2 this is 30 degrees so plus cos 30 degrees into x2 how much is that root 3 by 2 x2 and what about y2 is along minus y2 and sin right so how much will it be our root 3 how can sin and cos both both be root 3 by 2 half okay so y1 dash equal to root 3 by 2 x2 minus half x2 are we clear with that sure and then the rest is simple x2 dash y2 dash same coefficients sure same coefficients x3 dash y3 dash same coefficient the only thing that you have to be careful about is which atom you are working with okay any question no question answer okay x4 dash of course x4 is the only atom that does not move I uh, so sorry atom 4 is the only atom that does not move so x4 dash is minus half into x4 minus root 3 by 2 by into y4 clear okay right. So, now what do we want to do what are we trying to do here we are trying to get the transformation matrix how do I get the transformation matrix let me write the equations first I, uh, I think the question is can I write one general equation okay. So, general equation would be xi dash or rather yeah x i dash is equal to minus half x j minus root 3 by 2 y j y 1 dash sorry y i dash equal to root 3 by 2 x j minus half y j where i 
denotes the transformed coordinate, j denotes the original coordinate. That will be the uh, generic general form of the equation if that is what you are asking for. We are working with the 3 n coordinates associated with each atom, right. We are finally, we want to talk about internal coordinates. We are talking about motion of one atom with respect to the other. If we use the laboratory fixed coordinate system, then it is difficult to see. It is much easier if you go and sit on one atom and see how uh, they move with respect to each other. You are working with 3 n coordinates associated one uh, sets of 3 coordinates associated with each atom. So, you have to do this, right. So, I have erased the uh, diagram and let me write it in a little neat fashion like this. So, what I have is I have a set of 3 equations for every atom, okay. Now, I want to write it in the form of a matrix. Of course, you understand that when I want to write a form of matrix, what I will have is I will have a lot of 0 coefficients, right. For example, this x 1 dashed is minus half, but what, what is it, what is the coefficient of say x 1? 0. So, I have to write something like x 1 dashed is equal to 0 x 1 plus 0 y 1 plus 0 z 1 minus half x 2 minus root 3 y 2 y 2 and then everything else is 0 once again. Why am I all of a sudden importing so many zeros? Because I have to write the matrix, all right. I hope this is not very difficult to understand. This is, these are the equations that you write. So, just so that we see things a little better, what we will do is, we will show you the non-zero blocks in a different color, okay. So, these blue ones are the blocks that we have worked out in the previous stage. All right, clear so far? This part is easy, I hope. Now, can you write the matrix now? Hey. Left hand side x1 dashed, y1 z dashed, z1 dashed, x2 dashed, y2 dashed, z2 dashed, etc., etc. Write the whole thing as a column matrix. Right hand side, what I will do? x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2, x3, y3, z3, x4, y4, z4 as a column matrix that will be left multiplied by the transformation matrix. The transformation matrix will be a collection of the coefficients. I, I hope there is no difficulty going from here to here. Raksha, easy, okay. So, this is the matrix. First, let us work out the character then we will talk. What is the character? Character is sum of all these diagonal elements. So, what is it? 0 plus 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 0. Now, we have something minus half minus half and then 1. So, finally, after all this we get a 0. So, character of C 3 if you work with the 3 n coordinates of the molecule turns out to be a 0, okay. 